Hello, and welcome to Raw Impressions, the Freeform Podcast, with Lou and Adele. Take it away, Adele. Hi. Hi. We were just, we were just... Bitching. Kind of bitching a little bit before we started recording. We were, we were many things. We were like, what is it, aghast? disturbed, frustrated, uh, kind of a range of some darker emotions, <laughs> or at least yeah. I was, but maybe you are too. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, Actually, I, I, I'm doing okay. I'm here good. in Denver. I uh, skipped out on two bus drives. Mm -hmm. And uh, I just want to play this real, for you real quick. This is from a uh, Hey everybody, it's Stuffy Bunks. <laughs> I got something to say. Lou was not on the bus last night, nor was he on the bus the night before. And uh, I'm wondering, what? Where are you? Did you take a plane to the next destination, or was you kicked out of the band? Now you. <sighs> You could have been kicked out of the bed. I mean, you're a bottom bunker. You bottom bunkers usually go first. <laughs> you can be replaced. Okay. I'm not sure what the story is, but, well, me and Winston Willie missed you. And um, I can only hope you're coming back. Well, you know what? You are coming back. <laughs> Nobody escapes the bunk. It's the most practical way to get from A to B in this great country of ours, and you know it. You can fly all you want to Barlow, but you're going to be back. You're going to be back in the bunks. Stuffy's <laughs> got room for you. <laughs> you can't escape. <laughs> Isn't that right, Whistling Willie? Yeah, that's right. You tell him. Well, we'll see you. You're, you're coming to Salt Lake with us. I know it. <laughs> and don't get any ideas about leaving Salt, Salt Lake and flying to Seattle. <laughs> That's not you, man. That's you. You're meant to be in the bunk. Well, come back. We missed you. All right. That was Stuffy Bunks. Um, checking back in because, yeah, we flew. Murph, Jay, and I mm -hmm. flew from Dallas to Denver and skipped out on two overnight bu bus rides or, yeah, um, Usually this is something Jay does. He'll fly. and uh, But I think uh, Murph and I both, I think uh, living inside a catheter bag um, is definitely, yeah, we're, we flew. It's been a long, it's been a long tour. <laughs> and it's not over yet. So you're, but you are nearing the end. It's not that long. I mean, it's been two plus weeks, I guess. I, I don't know. You're, you're, Two plus you're, weeks? <laughs> how long has it been? You're funny. <laughs> it's been a month now. Month? Yeah, it's been a month exactly now. I Since think. I left? Yeah. Hmm. I like to, I like to <laughs> eliminate information in my brain, <laughs> you know, just so I'm not carrying as much, you know, carrying as much information. But um, that that's a little bit of uh, that's and I've noticed this too when I travel with you, which doesn't happen very often. But when it does, um, there's a little bit of like tour privilege where your brain just doesn't have to think about some things. It's like, nope, that's far away. I don't have to think about that. Perhaps it's a coping mechanism that I've learned over thirty years. But I also noticed it right away when I've traveled with you too. It's like. Oh, what? Life? I don't know. I don't have any responsibilities. I'm free as a bird. <laughs> free as a bird. And I'm going to feel free as a bird for a few days coming up. So That's true. 
It's true. We're going to be free together, baby. <sighs> I mean, I I have some stresses about it because it's the longest I've ever been away from Izzy. Four whole days. Mm-hmm. Four full days. Morning to night. We don't get back till Sunday evening. And when she wakes up on Thursday morning, I will be gone. I will already be on an airplane. So. I have a little bit of a complaint. Okay. Um, it's not an explanation. It's just, a, it's just a complaint. Okay. Okay. Um, we got to the hotel yesterday, you know, we flew here from Dallas and, um, this is one of those hotels, like the one that you and I had in Boston where you have to make your own key. Oh, you check in yourself, uh-huh. <laughs> yeah. but it's like, yep. it was like kind of, I mean, when I say ordeal, I'm just talking, I mean, it's like, it probably like, you know, maybe really only added up to like five minutes, but it's funny mm-hmm. how those five minutes can seem so incredibly. Five minutes can really matter to people. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We were just, we were just talking about this. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Uh, so, but yeah, you had to scan your own license, but it wasn't like you put it on a tray. You had to hold it. Anyway, that thing of like doing it yourself, then the people that do work at the hotel actually seem a little more agitated yeah. than if you were to just go to the desk and ask them like, hey, I'm checking in and they're like, here's your keys and they do it. They seem yeah. more agitated because that was the case in Boston. I agree. A hundred percent. You're right. They are more agitated. Yeah, it, it so it's not doesn't seem great for the employees. Uh, I don't feel empowered in the least by making my own keys. I I feel I don't I like the interaction of checking into a hotel. Actually, Me too. Me I too. like it going up to the desk, talking to the person, being making eye contact, being yeah, you know, being kind or just being open to whatever they tell you because they might tell you your room is not ready for the next three hours and you what might if have you to have sit questions? in the and, and, but, it, but you just want to be, you want to accept it, whatever they have to tell you. But then when they hand you the keys and it's an easy interaction, it's like, whoa, it's just, there's a really unique relief and this like, really, this real meaningful exchange that happens. Like here is your space, sir. So, so anyway, these, uh, checking myself in and making my own key, Mm -hmm. you know, I, I, it was funny because Jay Murph and I were at three little kiosks doing this, working on it, you know, and, uh, it was just funny (laughs) because we were all sort of individually struggling with it quietly. And then Jay goes like, this sucks. (laughs) It's like, it does suck. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But I got my key first. I was first one in the elevator and up, up, up to my room. Can I just say, too, that also feels like possibly ageist. I mean, I, depending on yes. how adept you are at technology or computers or things like that, like, I could tell you. My parents, okay, so when they visited in May, when you go to the airport, right, at, at, at Delta or I'm sure every airline now, there is also a little like little station, a little kiosk where you check in. And again, you're right. It's like the fact that then you have to additionally ask for help 90% of the time, the workers are like, God damn it. Like it's a, then it's a bother because they're like, the thing's supposed to take care of you, you know? And it's like, so I had to park the car, go into the airport and then completely do the kiosk thing for my parents. Like dad, give me your driver's license. Like, let me do this for you. They didn't even bother trying. I mean, I, it was a full assist. I had to do it all. And thank God I fly enough that I'm like comfortable with that kiosk. Right. Um, but I remember thinking 
man, this is actually intimidating for some people. And like my, my mom, I could tell was very stressed by it and it, and it, and it created a lot of anxiety for her. And honestly, I'm going to tell you this, the anxiety of it, it feels unnecessary. It does feel unnecessary. It feels like this choice that we've made, right? That we're just, we all have to do. It's like, why does this have to? And then I see, I see the thing, same thing happen at like CVS when like people are just like scratching their head and they're trying to fucking scan out their shit and, and move along. And then I'll see like, you know, a lot of times senior citizens just happily waiting in a line to, to check out with the one employee who's left at CVS. Cause they're like, no, 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 I'll wait. I'm good. I'm good. Like I don't, that machine. Because now no. there's like, there's two employees that work an entire sizable CVS. Exactly. We just, but I think you, I think what you really, I think by saying it's ageist is true because now mm -hmm. as an older person, I mean, the room that I have right now is very sim similar to the one we had in Boston. It's a little can, better, but they can I ask you, do you have yes. a fucking bunk bed behind you? Well, this is the thing. It's this bed is actually, it's raised up. There's actually a, there's stairs to the bed uh, for, for no reason. Why? For no reason. I mean, they put all the storage underneath it. It's almost like they want people to live in this hotel room, which is also, you know, it's fair enough. But again, ageist because if you know you're over and ableist right what if someone's yeah, like no, i can't climb up that like i yeah it's uh so yeah i'm i'm complaining and there's a, there's a bit of a there's a crotchetiness to to what i'm i'm saying that but also yeah. seems unsafe getting out of the bed at night. Like you're kind of stumbling. You're like, this is not my typical bed. Usually you just roll over, you put your feet on the floor, you go to the bathroom like an old person does a million times a night. And then so you got to climb down a staircase. Don't even get me started on the blackout shades. Okay. Get started. There, there What's is wrong like, with them? There's, there's this, the controls next to it have like nine buttons. Great. Nine buttons on the control. Like, I don't know what. And then you press something and then you figure out it goes up and down, but you don't know which sh shade it control. It's just crazy. I don't get it. I had to mash my palm into that thing over and over and over again until somehow I got lucky and, and, the and, I, and got the, and the blackout shade came down. Cause otherwise I was like, if that black sh blackout shade does not come down and I have to go down and ask, they're just going to look at me like they're going to roll their eyes and go, yeah. Well, there's controls next to the. I'm like, yeah, I know there's controls. Is, Which is, ones is, are is it they? Just because I'm old that I don't understand this. This. It, 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 it. But you're right. Ageist. I don't that like five it. Min, that five minutes making my own key was a That's waste crazy. of my time. That's crazy. Can I just say now that we will leave this one unnamed for now because you are currently residing in it we can now name the one we were in, in Boston. Um, that was, we actually booked that hotel ourselves. It wasn't through the band. Um, it was called, I think citizen M of Boston. And are you, are you about to cut loose on citizen M? I, 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 Hey, you know, this is my verbal review. Okay. Here's my verbal review. I did not like also the computers lined up to greet me to make my own key. That was, it took us also, we were like, what the hell? I don't understand. I mean, we were confused. And also again, you and I, we're, we're people who want to connect with, we want to connect. We're entering our home for the next 24 hours. We want to like connect to someone. And yes, she was Kurt, right? Mm -hmm. Kurt, but using friendly language to like, as if that would mask the curtness or like, Hey friend, you know? And it's like, no, 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 clearly I'm obviously, I'm not your friend. You hate me. I hate you. We're okay. Let's just great. So the, no one's friends here, zero friendship, but you know, so that really sucked. Um, I felt like the elevator situation what the fuck was that? There was something weird about that. Like, 
Well, I mean, don't get me started about being in <laughs> elevators with people and their keys trying to figure out. Oh, my God. You know, and you we're have all to racing to put because, our thing on the thing. Because they don't want just anybody going up in those elevators. It has to be someone who has purchased a room for the night. Right. And you then need to understand that you tap your key on wherever the fuck the pad is, whether it be below the numbers or above the numbers. And right. yes, I've walked, I mean, just in this tour alone, I've walked into several elevators with very confused people. Just almost I like just waving, waving the key in the, in the air, air. Like, and pressing sure. the buttons like, what is going to make this work? <laughs> Help! But, and the last one is, and it's, you know, it's not just an age thing either. Because no, I, I know. It, exactly. I'm like, I'm trying to put my finger on it. It's Yesterday, it's, it was a family. It was like, it was like a family. I think three kids, young kids, one in a stroller. Yeah. And like this couple who like obviously have been through a journey to get there. They've got their big ass bags. They look like people who've just been on an airplane with small children. Yes. All day fucking long. Right. And now they finally made it to their hotel and they're like, you can, but they can't figure out the key thing. And I, I come in the, you know, I see them go up the elevator, but then I see the doors open and they're just still standing in the elevator. <laughs> like, and I'm like, Oh no. <laughs> Right. And then they're, so we're, me and this other guy are all trying to work together to get them to their room and get the right combination of key to. So I, I was God like, damn you put it. the key first and then you press the number. And hopefully that works because it often does not. Often the key, right. no matter what hotel it is, it doesn't register when you, okay. We can't wait. So we don't want to have employees, right? This is, are these money saving things? Is yeah, that this what is, this well, is all it, about fucking money, right? Because didn't there used to be someone where they called the bellhop or something like someone actually used to be an elevator person. They would be like, how you doing? What floor are you going to? Dink. You know, like how classy is that guys? I mean, like, and then well, you can greet them and then, then, but don't then, they do then, that? You know where they do do that? You know where, where? they do in where? Milwaukee at that, Oh, classy ass hotel the, fister. the fister? fister you guys that sounds it's a gross name don't get your head out of the gutter but it's not that it's like p f i s t e r right anyway yeah. anyway maybe your you're elbow. like what are you even talking about yeah. what's fister never mind if you don't know you don't know but <laughs> and if you place, do you do but and it's not here's here's the thing too is like that place is is probably half the price Yes. Of these, of these fucking. That too. It's a good deal. That place deal, is just, yeah. But right. they, they make a point of saying like, we kind of value certain things, um, that didn't seem to be broken, right? Within the hotel system. And so they're still employing people. Well, they're greeting expensive. people. I think, I think eliminating employees is, is the, that's what's happening. And that's been happening for a long time. God. But in this right. case, in this case, it's like you are creating more work for the employees. For and the then one because, person. And, and that's why they're one, agitated. Yeah. And they really don't, they don't even know. And, and the funny thing is at this place, there is actually, I realized today, there's actually like three, there was actually three employees just kind of hanging around the lobby. Just, you know, and someone's like on like a laptop. And they're all employees and you have to. So then you have to it interrupt them. It just seems very them. amorphous. Like what they actually do seems really amorphous. So it's like, is, so the person that's going to help you when you fuck up at the machine is also just also supposed to like, I don't know. They just sit at these sort of pseudo bar areas and then you, it's just. Uh, I hate this. Well, maybe, maybe the, maybe the young people, maybe this is the way they like it. You know, they don't, they want a minimal interactions and they're, and they just naturally know how to. Is this a go Gen Z thing? Steps. Oh, I, I, I don't, I don't know. If we have any Gen Z listeners out there and I, there might be a couple, just a small handful. Can you please let us know? Is this really the way? What's wrong with us? I can't, but so let me go back to Citizen M. All right. So the other thing. That for me was extremely claustrophobic. All right. First off, Citizen M in Boston is 
expensive. All right. I'm going to just say it. It's Capital not a, X. It is not a cheap hotel. This, we did it as honestly like a splurge because it was like, I don't do this often. Lou and I, we actually don't go out very much. We we're at home. We don't go places. We don't have like a fancy life. So I'm like, Oh, I'm going to stay at a nice hotel in Boston. I'm going to stay somewhere convenient to the TD garden, right? Like yada, yada. Okay. It's, it's too much money, too few employees. My bedroom, my bedroom, my room, my hotel room was very small, very small. Modular. And it, it was, was like a Japanese hotel. Claustrophobic as F, guys. Yeah. It's, I'm like, oh, am I in France? This is unnecessary. Like, this is so tiny. So the bed, the head and the foot both hit the wall. It was like wedged into you the wall. That. And you really, yeah. the, I, I just kept thinking, like, I'm, it's closing in on me. It's closing in on me. I'm, I'm in that scene in Star Wars when the trash can. Oh, the trash starts compactor. closing in on them and i'm like mm. ah. i mean I, it still haunts me just that that thought of the trash compactor i'm like i'm in the trash compactor except it's a bed and then the the one employee who didn't want to help us to begin with was like trying to fucking like help us with the computer and she's oh you got to have the city view and i'm like oh okay i, I don't whatever i don't really care there was no view no it was and, not she she gave us she suggested a room plugged in the, i mean because she did have to step forward like like a move, you know? <laughs> yeah. Cause again, we didn't know what the fuck we were doing. Uh, yeah. And then she, she got us a, a city view, but it was actually a view of a brick wall. It, it, it was. And I'm like, yeah. uh, okay. Um, thank yeah. you. So then the bathroom is literally like a, it's like you're camping. It was almost like a, a, a tent inside of your room. Everything was inside of the room instead of there being like a wall, really like a, like an actual wall. It was like physical. a camper. Actually, it was probably like a camper. Yes, you know, like, oh, like, we have the bathroom and we have, you know, we have the toilet here and here's the, yeah. It, you want privacy. If you're like sharing that room and you're shitting and the other, you're like, you are in it. You are, you are there for the whole experience with that person. It's Can like, you imagine if that was like your first overnight date with somebody. I know. What if you're Can like you excited? Imagine, like, we're going to spend the night together in the yeah, hotel. We're and we're finally going to go do it. And we're going to spend the yeah. night. It's going to be romantic. Like super sweet. Weezer getting fans. to know each other. It could have happened. It could have happened. Like this, this uh, young couple from, Maine sure. could have been like came a real down to the show came down to the show at TD garden. Maybe they, they were even waiting like, to, 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 yeah, they have a know? hard time finding places of their own, like in up in Portland where they're from, you know, they've, they both live with roommates. They're like, you know, we can finally have our own room, but uh, the shitters in the room right there. Surprise. It's right there. And it's right there. not and only, I mean, but there's a little it's like curtain. A, tiny little curtain and then like a little thin sh plasticky shell around the shitter and um yeah, yeah. you're going to get to know each other real fast and then the shower was tiny and then the the pump wasn't even working on it cuz i remember when i went in there i was like what happened to it and you're like the pump's not working so you had like dismantled no, I had, the <laughs> i unscrewed the shampoo <laughs> bottle <laughs> Totally screwed it. Everything was operating through an iPad. I didn't like it, you guys. Okay. Oh, yeah. Trying to figure out how to shut off the TV. <sighs> yes. Because the TV, of course, was just on. Yeah. And then and I was then like, why can't I? Good luck figuring the, out how to turn that power. off. I'm, 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 I'm like, but you know what? I like that. I like, uh, you've really struck on something ageist. Ageist. Okay. I, it felt ageist to me. And, and oh, we're old. Oh, we're aged. Oh, and, and we are aged. It, we are. We're, I'm. Fi we're officially middle aged, and you're going to be a senior citizen soon. So hey, am I not you know, already middle a senior, senior, senior citizen? I don't am know. I not already senior fifty five plus? Maybe I get you are. A I get AARP <laughs> crap. I'm like retired. So, but I'll say this too: when I retired. um Never. got into the elevator the next morning to go have my breakfast which I had prepaid for um, the two older gentlemen, probably in their sixties look like business kind of, you know, mm -hmm. they were there for work. 
um, got into the hotel or into the elevator with me, bitching, bitching about it. <laughs> they were like, what the fuck is with this place? Like, my internet's not working, the shower thing, what is that? I mean, they were like- Oh, they were? I, oh, that's so yeah. funny. Yeah. And I was like- I'm oh, not gonna. Cool. I'm gonna just quietly agree. Like I didn't feel like engaging, but Were you I silently nodding. I was like, <laughs> I'm feeling this so deeply, sirs. Um, and so then you know went down to the lobby for the breakfast, and I have a lot of complaints about Citizen M. What I did think they did correctly, I really liked their breakfast buffet. So. Let's end this on a positive note. Yeah, I would like to say that I appreciated, th I thought, for the lack of care that's in the checking in, the weird elevators and your stupid rooms, your restaurant breakfast situation was actually very thoughtful. Everything was like in these beautiful staub, like in La Crusette style, like cast iron it was very nice, like actual eggs scrambled, actual bacon, you know, like well, you did beautiful. Pay extra. You paid extra. But you know what? I'll say this. The yeah. breakfast was not that expensive. It was only like $20 for oh. the breakfast buffet that you oh. add on. So. Oh, okay. They really. But I'm not going to just go there. I mean, th there's that makes no sense. It's like you should be matching that kind of courteousness to the whole place. And the food was good. I had an oat milk latte that also was included. I could go back and get as many as I wanted. And what? Yeah. So they made it for me like at an espresso bar and everything, wow. espresso machine, fresh squeezed juice. I had fresh squeezed I like grapefruit juice. I like this positivity that you're yeah. actually making me think of good things. Whereas we started yeah. this, it was dark. I know yeah, it was a little dark, and um, so I would like to in, say I'm going to end it on a high. You were in the trash compactor. <laughs> uh, you know, I was. I'm, I'm like mashing panicked. My Princess Leia, what's happening? Fist into a control panel, trying to get these yeah. fucking shades coordinated. I actually, I don't even know how I did this. I managed to get down, pull up the blackout curtain. I don't even know how I did it. I, I'm a fair person. I like to say that. I think I'm very fair. I will. Well, you should will, be on the design team for something like this. And you had this idea. Why, why don't they ago. have me be a private shopper there? I could like give them invaluable, like specific critique. Like, yeah, listen, that's like guys. I wanted to be, I've been, you know, someone who <laughs> travels a bit, you know, to give them some like unfiltered, um, you know, like. You travel a lot. You, you know, should, yes. They should be hiring all Starbucks, traveling musicians. Yeah, Starbucks 7192 in Huntsville, Alabama, off exit 62. Mm -hmm. Non-kiosk, freestanding Starbucks. Lou Barlow says, and this goes to, to corporate. This is not a Yelp review. They're, they're, I am giving my unfiltered opinion on my visit. To store 7192 in Huntsville, Alabama. Okay. Well, was it was good? It was great. Oh, it was great. okay. I was like, God, I'm, I'm dying to know. It's great. Okay. It's great. Well, same with Citizen M's breakfast buffet. Really good. Lots of places to sit. Clean. Um, so, yeah. Well. Just um, don't stay in the room. <laughs> Guys, let's, let's wrap this up. up. Let's wrap it up. Um, yeah, I'm going. Uh, I'm got a show tonight. I'll be back in the stuffy bunk mm -hmm. <laughs> for Salt Lake. Say hi to your buddies. What? Yeah, fuck you, stuffy. I'm flying. I'm flying from Salt Lake to Seattle. I can't take it anymore. Yeah, I can't. It's happened. Raw impressions. How about fuck you, Lou Barlow, you fucking diva.